Hey y'all, it's Betsy from Happily Ever After, etc. And I am back with another gardening project. So today I am going over to the nursery with my mom and we are after a few peonies. So I am on the wait list at my local nursery for peonies and for some Lumprina, the truffle of pink. And they called and said they had peonies in stock. So we are going to get those. And then we are going to head over to a second nursery and um, just check it out. It's the Buds and Blossom Nursery. The first one is the Dothan Nursery. They're the ones you normally go to on their wait list. Um, the Buds and Blossom Nursery is further out, so we don't get to go there as often, but we're just going to see what they have. There's a few other things I'm looking for. I have planted a lot of foxglove seeds, um, but I'm looking for some more foxglove plants. My mom has a beautiful foxglove garden. Um, with lots and lots of foxglove, and she adds probably 10 to 15 new foxglove every year if you want to keep them coming back since they're annual, you do need to do that. Um, last year I had three in my garden, none of them came back or seeded. I've added three so far this year, but they were a little expensive, so I've been waiting later in the season um, to get some more a little bit cheaper won't be able to enjoy them for quite as long, but hopefully they will come back next year if I get smaller ones or um, sell seed. And I have put a lot of foxglove seeds in the ground that hopefully will come up and bloom for me next year. I also think I'm going to try overwintering in some milk jugs, a bunch of foxglove babies this winter. Mom and I have been talking about putting up a poly tunnel and doing a bunch of seeds over the winter. But I'm getting I'm getting away from the topic and my neighbor is mowing, so I hope that's not too distracting. So we're going to go to the nursery and we're just gonna see what we find. I'm gonna bring you along with me. Um, and I, I'm not gonna give you a full nursery tour to be there forever, but I will give you a baby nursery tour and we'll see what we find. I also think we might you see, you'll know by the time you watch this video, we might do a separate video on the peonies because peonies in the south are hard to grow. I've done a lot of research on it. Um, we're going to see how it goes. But we might do a video today, right now, on what we're going to find at the nursery and planting all those things. Hopefully lots of fox club. And, um, and then a separate one on the peonies. So let's go to the nursery and see what they have. Hey, baby, are you going to stay here? I think Biddy's gonna stay here. We're gonna take cinnamon. Biddy's not happy about that, but cinnamon gets to go too sometimes. That's the problem with having five dogs, you gotta rotate them. And since Biddy's the only one who can be off leash, she gets to be out here the majority of the time. But when we when we can do a leash, like at the nursery, they bring the other ones. So let's go get cinnamon and we'll head out. So we are at our second nursery. I did not show you the first nursery because I was just too excited about plants. But this one is called Buds and Blossoms. It is in Dothan, Alabama. And it is beautiful. So mom and I are walking around. We, um, we were looking for peonies, which we found at the other nursery. But, you know, always a few things we found. So we did find some foxgloves that are already blooming, but they have side shoots and they were $6 for huge ones. So we're gonna get those and then a couple other fun things. So I'm just gonna kind of show you around a little bit what we're getting and then we'll go back home to plant. Wisteria, it's just beautiful here. Up here is most of their annuals. 
It's just tables full of color. And they've got little vignettes everywhere. It's just, it's really beautiful. And they have more up here and then they have acres and acres. So you start coming back here and you'll see um, roses and bushes and hydrangeas and all your bigger plants. And then they have a whole side of shade garden things as well, but there's mom and cinnamon. We are not, not trying to spend too much money. So here is what we have so far. Mom and I each found one of these fox gloves. So these two are mom's, these two are mine. I thought it was funny that we did not mean to, but she got two taller ones, I got two shorter ones. Then you saw last week when I was planning up the new bed, I planted that wisteria vine. It was $7 and it really just looks like it has no roots. I don't know that it's gonna grow. I'm not planning to buy a new one, but this pot, this is like a three, five gallon pot. It's a beautiful bush. It's $30. So I figure this is going to get me a couple years down the road. It's got balloons on it. We're just going to go for it. And then mom is actually doing her big stock tank um, planter. So she bought this for the tall center, some lantana to go over the sides. And last but not least, one more proven winners. Super Tunia Vista Silverberry, because my one that's coming back from last year is looking great, but next to the um, bubblegum, bubblegum just outperforms everything. So we're going to put two of these silverberries to compete with the bubblegum, and that'll be good. So here's our haul. We got, um, I got two peonies. Mom got one peony. And then I got two bags of Glads to succession plant with the ones I already have. I think that is about it for the day. So we are going to take all this and go home. And then probably not today, but maybe maybe on Monday, a couple days, we'll get all of this in the ground. And that is what you will be watching. So just planting up some pretty things. Ready to go home, Cinnamon? Cinnamon loves Grandma, but she wants to be with me, huh? Come here, Cinny. Come on. Come here, baby. Did, did Mama leave you again? I'm sorry. Let's go home, baby. Let's go home. All right, so it is very noisy today. Um, but we have the fox glove back. I think Mom and I... Walked around and we're placing things. So I think I'm going to put the two white ones up here. I wanted to put them down here with my three purple pink ones I already have. But as you can see, I have one, two, three, four back there um, pink tags where I have direct seeded my foxglove seeds. And um, they're still germinating and starting to come up. And so until I have plants there, I don't know if any of them have germinated. I have lots of other little like minka babies in these beds. So I don't want to disturb those seeds. 
in case those foxglove plants are going to germinate and start coming up. Um, and so having to get in there and put like the white ones in here that are really big could disturb those seeds. I'm going to not do that. Mom suggested I plant the white ones across the way and I come in with two of the baby foxgloves that we found and put one like here in between these two and one here in between these two. And hopefully that is far enough away from where I put the seeds that it will not disturb any germination. And then those foxglove will help come up for next year and we will have more plants. So we are also going to put the wisteria here. So you can see my, whoop. this is the wisteria stick I planted in the new bed video that you might or might not have seen. So this is the new wisteria plant you saw me just pick up and I'm going to put him here. If the wisteria stick grows great, I'll have two, but if not, this should still be close enough to the tree that it can grow up the tree. And like we talked about, this tree is going to have to come down eventually. Um, it's not going to live forever. And so I'm not super worried about putting wisteria on this tree. There are lots of trees around here that have wisteria on it. Um, and by the time this tree has to come down in five, six, seven years, I, I shouldn't be here anymore. So we're going to go ahead and plant the two foxgloves and the wisteria. We are definitely going to stake these foxgloves. Um, I got them home and you can see it started to rain really bad. I should have brought them inside. I didn't even think about it until it's pouring down rain. And then I was like, what if the foxgloves fall over and the pretty bloom stops break before I even have a chance to plant them? I was so upset, but luckily they're just a little windswept. You can see where the wind got them a little, but I'll put them in. I'll stake them. They'll start going back straight with the sun. So it'll be okay. But. Dun, 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 dun. $6.99. That's why we got them. So I'm going to put those in the ground over here and then we're going to find spots um, for two more of the little fox gloves. Biddy says cinnamon who? Biddy Biddy's back. And then here's the rest of our plant haul. Oh good, maybe the neighbor's done mowing. So these are the peonies from the first nursery. So I am definitely going to do a separate peony video since I got two plants. You can see they still have more eyes down there growing from the tubers. Um, we're starting to get a bud. So I'm going to put those on the ground. I wasn't planning to plant these today, but they got wet in the rain as well. So we, we probably will plant these glad bulbs. That'll be an easy plant. And then here are the little ones we found. Um, ended up with seven of them. So I'm going to put two by the old foxglove, two by the new foxglove, and three into this bed. Um, I mean, the whole goal is just to have foxglove and see all these pink tags is where I put seeds just popping up in between the iris and the glads and the, everything. Um, and then the lamb's ear, as it grows in, will cover all of these foliage pieces until the iris and the um, foxglove and different things are just coming out of the, the lamb's ear foliage. And then when like the iris foliage and the glad foliage is done growing and being beautiful and making flowers, it will die back into the lamb's ear. And I've seen people do that. It's an experiment to see, you know, how close is too close that things won't grow properly and the lamb's ear will cover it still. So so far, you can see all the growth. It's all looking great. But we have a whole two more layers at least. Um, I'm going to put some poppies out here and some box clubs. So whole goal is just to get a beautiful overgrown border. But we're going to start by planting those three and then the baby fox glove. And then maybe we'll do the glads, I think, will be last. So let's do it. So as you know, this is compost, not mulch. So it is good for the plants. Um, and as you dig, you want to make sure you're 
mixing it down into the dirt that you're planting in because um, it is it is very good for them. But we're going to plant the other one, we'll plant the wisteria, and then I do have some supports I'm going to put on these. Also, don't forget your slow release fertilizer. There's definitely a big tree root right here, so we're gonna move over just a smidge, move that salvia, and see if we can't get on the other side of it. That's much better especially because when you're planting a big plant like this, you want to try to till up that dirt as much as possible so that the, the roots have nice, soft, easy dirt to grow into. Voila! Two blocks left, two supports. Now, even though everything's very wet already, I'm gonna water them in since they were just planted. I'm gonna make sure if there's any air pockets where we are pushing that dirt down around the root balls that we get the air pockets out. Two of the baby fox club over here, but hopefully I won't have to be walking around up there. I mean, you can see my tiger lily bulbs coming up, my zinnia seeds coming up, fox club seeds coming up, all these baby salvia I transplanted. I'm trying not to walk in the beds while they're growing as much as possible. You don't want to accidentally crample something. Of course, Biddy has no such qualms. Biddy, get out of the zinnia patch. Maybe they're babies. They're babies. She just wants to be close to me. Alright. We use a little bit more water. And water this crepe mill a little. I'm giving him a little extra water to help him along. There we go. Looking good. As the wisteria vines grow up, we will try to train them up the tree a little bit. Um, I've seen lots of different opinions and suggestions on how to do that. So I'm gonna have to pick one and then maybe we'll do a video on that specifically. But for now I'm gonna put y'all on fast forward and we are gonna 
plant the rest of these foxglove. Same way we did these two, except since they don't have bloom stalks, they won't need supports. Whew, we're gonna go get some water for us first. Come on, bit. All right, y'all, so I wanted to show you up close how exactly I'm planting these glad bulbs. So if you watched my bulb video, you saw me plant all these glads and the irises. And so when I planted these, I used my auger and I tilled up the whole area really good so that the dirt down here is uh, nice and soft. But glads um, bloom once per season. And so if you want more than one bloom, you have to plant them in succession, which is why I didn't just till up this area, I tilled up the whole area. Now, some people will come in every two weeks, plant more corms, and then you will have some all season long. I don't know that I will do that this year. I might plant some more next year, but for now I planted these uh, late February and it is Easter Sunday and I'm going to plant I'm planting two more per group. So each group has three to five corms already, all different varieties. Sorry about that. This is what the corms look like. You can see the roots on the bottom, the growth point on the top. You want to dig down four inches, put your slow release fertilizer in there, and then you want to plant them with the growth point up. There we go. And you want to dig, since these are already growing, we want to dig close enough that they're part of the grouping, but far enough away, so about four-ish inches, that we're not disturbing these roots because these are still growing. They haven't bloomed yet. We don't want to ruin those blooms. So we're going to just cover these over with some good dirt. Dun, 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 dun and compost, and then we will have a second gladiolus bulb bloom. After these have bloomed and the foliage starts to die back, the ones in front will come up and hide that and bloom for the second time. So you can see I've done that all the way down. Glads, glads, glads. Um, I did mark my glads, here we go. There's an easy one to see with these white tags so I can tell the difference. These are iris bulbs. These are glad bulbs. The foliage is different. You can see these are more upright. Glads are a little taller and the iris come out in more of a fan. Here's my blooming iris. Here's my bitty bitty. Um, whereas the glads are more of an upright, tall stalk with multiple blooms when they do bloom. Um, but especially when the blooms are little or the foliage is little, the glads and the irises are hard to tell apart. So we went ahead and marked all the glad corms. I wish I would have marked the iris ones with a different color, like how I have on my fox glove um, that I direct seeded marked with pink. The benefit of marking your bulbs and your seeds and things and your flower bed is that before they come up, you know exactly where to water Instead of just being like, oh, I think I planted iris over here. You can be like, oh, I, I planted them right at this tag. Water this tag. So there you go. We put two new corms in in front of all these gladiolus. So we will have these pretty glads come up. I did three different varieties for all of these. So these will be all different. But um, 
I just thought these were so pretty. And so I went ahead and I got two packages. So our second planting, if they all come up, will all be the same. First variety, all different. Second planting, all the same. But I do have a couple left to go plant. Do, 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 do. Back on the other side of the porch, I have four more glad groupings over there. So I'm gonna go plant in front of those and then we will be done. Um, you saw that I put a foxglove in this opening between these iris and these lambs here. We have another foxglove direct seated there. Glads, irises, irises, different kind of iris, but still iris. Glads, iris. Like I said, I want all these different things to be coming up all different seasons and and beautiful at the back of the bed. And then we have another box glove here that I planted. And we'll put the other three here, one, two, three, in front of these three mum plants. The box glove will come up in the spring and be a beautiful show. And then the mums will come up and bloom in the fall. Um, and once a bunch of those Vinca babies grow in, I'm gonna transplant them all. Last year, I filled this whole little area with Vinca and it was quite pretty. So I'm gonna do that again so that I don't have to buy a whole field of plants. It's not really a field, but I call it the Vinca field. Um, and we might put a few more Vinca up here. This petunia bubble gum will fill in quite the area, but it might not get those top parts. And then I'm also, since the snapdragons probably will not last past July, since it's so um, hot in July, I'm going to plant a bunch of those little baby vincas in amongst the snapdragons. So by the time the snapdragons are fading out, the vincas will just be starting to really come into their own and the vincas will take over these spots where the snapdragons are. So I am still learning, but my whole goal is, you know, succession planting so that when one flower goes out, another one comes in and I always have something pretty in that spot but I just wanted to show you up here we planted that second the silverberry and here's the first plant it's been in here as long as those petunias um here and you can see just how big that one's gotten versus how big this one's gotten they're still beautiful plants just that bubble gum outperforms everything so Go ahead, put two there and cut this one back a little and then they will be more even, I guess you would call it. I'm over on the other side by the original foxglove. And I just wanted to show you, this is a really good corm with a really good growth point. So if that's what your corms look like, that is great. I'm going to plant this guy four inches deep right here. And we know that he is good luck because there's a little ladybug down there. Ladybugs are always excellent luck. <laughs> in, case you, in case you didn't know that. All right, we've got one more to plant here. And then two to plant in front of this glad. You need to pick up that water bottle. Biddy, are you under the porch for shade? It's not hot today. And then I think we're done. All right, y'all. Everything is in the ground from the nursery. So we got our two big fox gloves in. We got all nine baby fox gloves in. I don't know if you noticed, I thought I had seven of those. Um, I was gonna buy five and then they only had one flat left and the flat was 12, 12 plants um, and they were missing a couple. And so my mom needed some little daisies that were the same price, same container, same size. So we just put those three on the flat and we got the flat place instead of the plant price, which if you're new to gardening, that's something my mom's taught me. Most nurseries do. If you buy a single plant, it'll be one price. 
if you buy a flat of plants, you get a bit of a discount for buying a, in bulk. Um, so we bought the flat instead of just the plants. And so I thought I was getting seven plants, but I actually got nine, which was great. It gave me an extra one for this side and an extra one for this side. Um, like I said, I just, I love foxglove. I want them to like intermingle with all the iris and the glads. Um, so foxglove and iris are spring plants. So those will come up every spring and be beautiful. And then when those are tapering out, the glads will start taking over. Glads, like you saw, like I told you, are succession plants. So they will plant all summer. They will bloom all summer, but only if you plant them in succession all summer. So we have some now planted about a month apart. So we'll have some for a week or two, none, and then some for another week or two. It is April. So I could really probably plant some more in May and have a third grouping. And I may do that. I may not, not sure yet. Um, but we also got the wisteria planted. That was everything from the nursery. As you've been able to tell, it's very wet and humid out here. So muggy, <laughs> just bad for me, great for the plants. Everything is blooming and growing um, from yesterday even. And tomorrow I can see, you know, so many more buds on things that are just still going to keep blowing. So I'm, I'm really excited. I was not planning to plant today. I was planning to plant tomorrow, but it is supposed to rain again this afternoon. And I'll tell you when you're planting all these things, the thing I've learned is that a you can get them in the ground but b if you can get them in the ground before a rainstorm um they do so much better a than getting pummeled by rain in their pots but b the rain just settles them in their new home it sends the roots down deep it establishes them really nicely so wasn't planning to plant today it's easter sunday but i figured i want to get out here while everything is nice and fresh and wet and the dirt is easy and get everything in the ground so everything's planted Glad, check, fox club, little and big, check, and the wisteria. So we're going to go try to get the two peonies in the ground. And then I will um, shoot, like I said, that whole separate peony video for you. And if you have any peony tips, go check out that video and tell me what I'm doing wrong. Because this is my first time planting peonies. I've done a lot of research, but I have no actual knowledge. So I could use your help. In the meantime... Hopefully that will go quickly because I am ready for a shower before Easter dinner. So hope you enjoyed this. If you did, check out my May tour, check out my June tour when these things are going to start blooming. A note on the foxgloves. Um, like I've said, foxgloves are biannuals, which means typically, unless they're a um, modified hybrid plant, um, they come up the first year, they put on big bushy growth and are beautiful. And then it's not until the second year that they bloom. And so the big white ones that I planted, that's probably their second year because they're big plants. They probably won't come back next year, but sometimes they'll receive themselves. Um, the babies that I planted probably are first year plants. Now some, like I said, some hybrids will still bloom their first year. All of the seeds I direct seeded are hybrids and should bloom their first year. Although I got them in the ground late, so that might be my bad. So all of these that I planted though, unless they're hybrids, which it doesn't say, they just say they're Dalmatian peach. I know Dalmatian peach comes as a hybrid and not as a hybrid. They were $3. I'm guessing they're normal foxglove. They will grow big and beautiful this year and they will bloom for us next year. So. That's the truth. That's the spiel. We're going to go do the peonies now. So see you at that video. Bye, y'all. Thanks for watching. Come on, Betty.